Hello and what we're going to look at today is how to tune up your computer for when you're using On One Photo Raw 2022 on a Windows based machine and we're looking here at Windows 11 and particularly focusing on reducing the mouse delay and any stutter when you're either using sliders or when you're brushing and then there are general delays which mean that it can sometimes take a long time to do things. So let's quickly look at the sorts of issues that we were facing hope you can see all of these. The primary one is that mouth gets really slow so you start moving it and it judders or sticks moving from one thing to the other. Now on one photo raw 2018 and 2019 they sorted this out and it got a lot better and I can remember um, them making lots of videos and how much faster the performance was. I have to say that all of those gains from my point of view anyway have been lost. Sometimes there's unacceptable delay times and an example is the what thing shown below with a slideshow if you're running the slideshow even on the longest setting the previews sometimes never arrive before it's moved on to the next slide and certainly if there's any no noise ai that's been applied to those photos it won't show up it's it just will never arrive in in uh, the the slideshow completely unnecessary why they don't actually just cache reviews of all of the completed pictures first of all when you first run a slideshow a bit like it does in Lightroom so they ought to do that generally it often can feel really sluggish I was staggered and it's not improved when you get a fresh installation on a new top spec PC so here's an example of what I what drove me into looking more closely into this. My previous PC, we can see here on the left, was a second generation i7, and I'd spec'd it up as best I could within reason for the cost. It had 16 gig of RAM, I'd upgraded it to two gig of, of video RAM, uh, but it's actually gone up from uh, two group gig of gigabytes originally. I had gigabytes of Nvidia, uh, and that was a good fast card at the time. I'd gone mostly SSDs, except for my C drive on there, and USB 3 for any external drives. So I'd done everything that was reasonably possible other than upgrading my primary drive to an SSD. Everything about it was sluggish and it was driving me mad. And because I was using this for my job, I thought, right, well, I'm going to upgrade to the best I can get. So I went to Dell and my old one was an XPS and I'd be very pleased with it. So I got the new XPS. It's an i9 12th generation, 16 gig of RAM, because that's the best they offer you when you first buy it. It got an eight gigabyte Nvidia card. It's SSD throughout and including a one terabyte M2 disk, which as you know, they're twice as fast as the SATA drives really and all of the very latest USB connection. Absolutely honest about it, the performance was identical between the two. It, the upgraded machine made no difference whatsoever to my experience, and that really concerned me because it's well, it can't be related to the hardware, it must be related to something else. And I'd been on, the, they must, must have driven them mad on one because I was constantly annoying their department, their tech, tech support to try and get better things out. So what we're gonna look at today is some of the things that I've done to improve it. We're gonna look at the mouse, we're gonna look at the video card, we're gonna look at Windows 11, we're gonna look at the on one settings, and then finally a bit of on one workflow. And you really have to sort all of these out. There's no point in doing anything less. So let's start by going to the mouse. Now you might think mouse is a mouse is a mouse, but um, always, all drivers need to be regularly updated. So check that there's not an updated driver. Now for mine, I had a wireless mouse. And what one of the things that happened was that it said I needed a new driver for the Bluetooth dongle that it had. So not for the mouse itself, but Windows 11 obviously has something slightly different with its Bluetooth or it's a, or enhanced than my previous one. So the, that was the first thing I did make sure because there was some new hardware uh, um, firmware that needed to be downloaded for the Bluetooth dongle. Didn't make any difference, but it's important that you do these things. Uh, the next thing is make sure you've got your enhanced pointer precision on. So you can see that on the little menu on the left. So you do Windows I. Uh, so you use the Windows button and press I. That and then select Bluetooth and devices. Select your mouse from that. Go to the additional mount mouse settings and then bring up the pointer options. And what we're looking at over here on the right hand side, don't bother to change the, the pointer speed. That will just irritate you if it, because it almost vanishes in front of you. But enhanced pointer precision means that when you're moving it fast, it will move fast. But as you move slowly on the mouse, it doesn't have 
quite the same number of dots per inch that it moves and so you end up moving more slowly and more accurately when you're moving the mouse slowly and I think that makes a difference to help you just click on the right part particularly when you've got a lot of sliders on the screen that and uh, you may need to restart your machine if you've got a super fast modern one uh, that's all on uh, SSD then it should run quite quickly so once the mouse is done you then need to set up the graphics card and first thing that on one will tell you is to update the drivers now that's a good thing to do so on my nvidia i'm going to go down to the bottom here i open up the nvidia right click on it and it's got the control panel and the geforce experience i'm going to click on the geforce experience and it will open up and then you need to go up to the top to drivers and checks and according to mine it had the latest studio driver so that was okay but uh, it's also worth clicking on the right, those three buttons on the right hand side. If you're do doing NVIDIA, I can't really comment on any of the others, but on NVIDIA, go to these three buttons here and you get the choice. Do you want it best for gaming experience or do you want it for creative? And I have found hmm, it's minor, but I have found it's slightly better for creative apps here. So select the lower one. On one will never, ever point that one out, but you really ought to select the studio driver rather than the game ready driver. Once you've done that, that's OK but uh, we're now going to make sure that uh, we're queued a setting and we're going to do that opening up right clicking on the thing and this time we're going to go through to the control panel so here's the control panel i'll bring it up in fact i'll maximize it so you can see it well make sure you're on your main primary drive i go to the left go to 3d settings manage 3d settings click on that and it will bring up global settings and it's the CUDA GPUs that we're interested in. So come to program settings over here on the top. In the drop down list, you need to make sure that you can find on one. It may not be listed. And for me, it wasn't listed, which means that on one wasn't able to talk to my graphics card. So you search down here. If it's not there, you will click on add around and it's in C colon backslash program files backslash on one and then on one photo raw and you find that one and here's the path you can see up here c code forward slash has got here program files forward slash on one on one photo raw 22 then it's on one photo raw 22 dot exe make sure that is added to the list and then you come down here to the CUDA settings gpu and as long as your global settings are set for that it shouldn't make any difference but you can force it if you want to to use these gpus and then make sure you select selected yours and mine is the g4 c60 uh, okay on that and then we can click apply ready to go so now your video card is happy to receive instructions close that one down and we've already done that switch from gaming to creative so that's your graphics card sorted out the next thing to do is to set up windows 11 because windows 11 may not necessarily know what you're doing so we're going to come across to windows 11 uh, and we've got to check that your graphics card and, and on one are actually talking to each other so the way do we do that is select the win eye as we did before you need to check that the display for the graphics is set on. So we click on display we down this list and just at the bottom we find graphics and you need to just run through this list down here and you should find on one photo raw listed. Now you may not find it listed at all. If it's not there and it wasn't for me, then go back up here, say we want to select a desktop app and then browse. And again, you want to go to your program files, uh, wherever it is, so C colon, program files, on one, photo raw 2022. And we make sure that we can find the on one photo raw 2022.exe, same as we did for the other card. I'm going to cancel that because I don't need to, because I've already added it. Click on that and then select your options. And then when you're in your options, select high performance. That one has probably made the biggest difference. So you click save on that and then that section down. There we are. Now we can go into on one, go into edit and work our way down to preferences and then across this middle tag here, the system, and you'll see a, a range of different things. The key thing is these three sliders. In the perfect world with the most perfect system, you would have those slid pretty much over to the right. So this slider, the system, the VRAM and the video card strength. Video card strength actually is the one that seems to make the most difference. The other two 
you know, your guess is as good as mine as to make any difference on this, this section here in performance. Click the three boxes because in theory that's going to speed things up. This was still as sluggish as hell beforehand, even with my high performance system, and it still is even now. And then the video card strength, if it's on the left, it puts the emphasis much more on using the mouse and, and other things. And if it's on the right, it'll select your previews much more. I have found that actually it swings and roundabouts. I think you just have to try it out for yourself, but that's quite important. So experiment with a few of those settings. Then the next thing is, where is your scratch folder? Uh, your scratch folder, it should really be on an SSD. So this is the one when it, if it hasn't got enough memory to handle everything, it will page some of it out. You want it on as fast a disk as you can get. So mine's on my M2. And then the cache size underneath there, it's it's the location of the cache. Now I did on my previous computer, I did move that across to a dedicated SSD that just handled that. And sometimes it would fill it right up. It was enormous. So uh, you have to be careful. If you're going to move it, may I suggest you empty it first, then allow it to recache everything. But if the SSD's on a a USB drive, it's not really going to do anything, it should be an internal. So once you've done that, we are looking really at how we maximise the performance of On One. So as I said before, if you can put your photos on an SSD, then your catalogues. Now what I do is I just catalogue the last few years where I'm going to be working. That will take time because it will be trying to catalogue it and read everything in the background. So uh, my recommendation is you've got a small drive, you can always stick the, the files on there first of all and then later move them as long as you take all of the database files with them. So I catalogue the last couple of years, in fact, I probably don't need 2020 on here anymore. It's the ones I'm working on from this year. And then it's a good idea to just leave it running. Then when you're in your edit, this is Killian Castle in Scotland, a beautiful place. But if I open that one up into browse, you'll see it takes a while for the full resolution preview to arrive. I'm gonna get thing. Don't need anything on the left. So it took a little while. When we go into edit, I will show you what slow. So here we are. In fact, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna maximize that. So you can see the photo. This is not my ideal one. What was happening is that these sliders here were really slow. Even now, there was a bit of a delay when I first picked them up, but they're not too bad at the moment. But if we go into effects, now what I'll do is I'll load a preset with lots of things running. So I'm just going to go for my standard settings. I'll go standard soft. And these are the settings I want. I've clicked it. You'll see how long it took. Sometimes those the, even the fine preview will take a long time. And while it's all on, let's have a go at changing one of those sliders that in theory is all cached because I've just done it. And go. And you see how it drags behind. So the mouse goes there first and the slider drags along behind. Go across to effects. Now, see what happens. I'm now going to turn borders. No, let's, let's, let's ignore borders for a moment. Let's go to dynamic contrast. That's off. If I slide it this way, you'll see there's a delay. Uh, it's not so bad now because I've made all of those settings, but you click it and things just take a while to happen, but it is better now. Now I turn borders off and it's much more responsive. Borders is the one that kills it all. And if we have a look at borders, the setting in there that quite often does things is not so much the transform here, but the fit image. If you've got fit image at anything other than zero, then it makes it really slow. So, um, but, so I would recommend keeping ball off for as long as possible. So I was using this particular setup where all the things I would use would all come in at once. When you go into them, they're all set at zero normally. Like if I ever need a sun flare, I very rarely use a sun flare, I should take it out, but you'll see it's set to zero. But I haven't left it set to off. Sometimes it just turns it back on again. There's a glow that I might need. I've got that set to zero, but actually I have, I'm gonna click reset on this one. So reset it all. And I've now got the same thing, but set, everything is set to off. And that one comes in. See, it's still slow, it's not particularly fast, but now it's all there and my effects are present, but they're all in the off state. And it means that when I go into something like dynamic contrast and turn it on, that it actually works with what I've got. And even brushing, if I click on here and uh, try to brush. Awesome. You'll see that that 
actually works perfectly well. So I hope you find that helps you to get the speed out of what you want. It's still a bit of a workaround. It's not ideal. So what do I hope for, for, for on one software? What I really want on one software to do is a speed up previews. If that's cached, particularly if there is noise reduction in place, because it almost never shows noise reduction in a slideshow. It's never come in and half the time the slide hasn't even come in uh, when it's doing. Second thing is please can you put some effort into thinking how you can sort out the borders effect so that it doesn't slow things down. And while you're on it, do the same thing for text. Text is still an absolute nightmare and certainly doesn't show up in the previews when you first do it and you click save. Who knows what it is that you're going to get showing up in the previews, but it's almost certainly not what you thought you'd made. Okay, well, that gives on one a chance to think about it and hopefully I'll come up with something else soon. Okay, take care and bye.